Welcome into another episode of They've Got Now. I'm really excited to be joined today by someone who's been a big part of uh, a Big East program that has really come on over the last couple of years, particularly with an Elite Eight run recently. Uh, and that's Emma Ronchek from over at Creighton. Emma, first and foremost, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, no problem. I'm uh, I'm really excited to get you on. I know the Big East season has uh, it's kind of wound down. Like you guys, what it's been since last weekend since you guys played a game, or I guess Monday, um, and just with with how how the season has gone as a whole, with you know everybody's like just about to the last game, Big East tournaments coming up. Um, you just had senior night. How are you feeling? It's got to be kind of a little bit surreal. Yeah, it's it's been a wild season. I mean, it's gone by really fast. Every year, I feel like it just goes by faster now that you yeah. get older. Um, but it's been awesome. I think we've done a really good job this year. Twenty four, something like that. Lost to UConn twice, Marquette. And then two non-con games. Um, but yeah, I thought it was just a really good season. Still is going to be a good season. But yeah, it's been super fun. Yeah, I know you guys have a lot that you're looking forward to. Obviously taking it one game at a time. But yeah. um, definitely some big postseason aspirations. Um, you know, saying that it, it was senior night too. I mean, have you gotten a chance to kind of sit with that and be like, wow, okay, that was that was my senior night. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy to just think about how fast things go when you're a yeah. freshman coming in. And obviously, COVID was kind of a different situation um, that year kind of feels like a fever dream. I don't really remember all of it because we didn't play um, even 20 games, I don't think. Um, and then getting to this part and then just like realizing how fast it goes. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with my fifth year yet, so I still probably have another year of basketball left in me. Um but yeah, it's just really wild how fast it goes. You never really think about it until you're nearing the end. No, exactly. It's kind of funny because, well, I mean, exactly what you're saying. I only graduated a couple of years ago, but I still mm -hmm. like, I mean, thinking about, you know, COVID happening and how that yeah. kind of threw everything in flux. And it's like, it. I don't know, for me, at least it changed time perception so much because you feel mm -hmm. like, no, that was like just a little bit ago. I'm like, no, dude, that was like four years ago. Yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of jarring. Um. <laughs> Especially for you coming in, I mean, I believe if I remember correctly, your freshman year was COVID. Um, mm -hmm. So how did that even play out for you? Like, I mean, I've obviously you're already taking in a lot being a freshman, getting mm -hmm. acclimated to a new team. But then it's like, OK, well, now you have the craziest season that's happened in like the last 50 years is, is your freshman year. Yeah, I feel like we were kind of thrown into the fire a little bit just with all the masking protocols, had to wear goggles on planes and bus rides. Um but I don't think I'd trade it for anything. I mean, in that year, I probably would have said that anything else could have happened and it would have been better. But now looking back, you just kind of make memories and you can think about the silly things that we did during that year. Um, and I think it just helped us grow into sophomores, juniors, and now seniors. Um, looking back, that year wasn't the best. Uh, we didn't do the best basketball-wise, but I think we just uh, came out better for it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it really set up you guys mm -hmm. what you were doing moving forward because you kind of came in at a really interesting time like um Jalen Agnew had been a really great part of of, of Creighton and she uh went to the WNBA and then you're in as a freshman and a, just kind of a new group coming along so it's it feels like a little bit of a bridging of the gap there yeah um you know taking it back a little bit too I know obviously you're not from Nebraska from South Dakota so like how did you wind up at Creighton like what was the first thing that that put Creighton on your radar and, and what made you you go there because I think for me like the first time I really even heard about Creighton was when they joined the Big East and mm -hmm. watching Doug McDermott and that was all I knew about <laughs> Creighton um so yeah what drew you to Creighton I've always been one of those um players that never wanted to stay in their home state I kind of wanted yeah. to branch out but then I also am super close with my best friends from home my little sister older brother parents um so I didn't want to go too far away so Omaha was kind of that like perfect middle ground for me and then the coaching staff was just amazing right from the jump um, recruiting me super cool great coaches on and off the court so it was kind of just that family environment and then also being close to my actual family that kind of did it for me yeah and what is Creighton even like because again like I think I can hear Creighton I can immediately picture basketball on, on both men's and women's but like I don't know anything about Omaha Nebraska or just yeah. what uh what Creighton is like in general so you know how would you kind of explain it to somebody who's never been there before Creighton is one of those schools that really rallies around all the sporting programs here um volleyball is super super good here um every year their big east tournament champions are in the running for that and then men's basketball has obviously been really good these past years and then we're still climbing and continuing to get better better but it's just kind of that community in Omaha that just really rallies behind the sporting 
um, even if it's UNO or if you even head down to Lincoln, um, people really just rally behind the sports here. And I think that's just what makes it super special. Yeah, especially watching the game against Nebraska this year. It felt that for sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, going from there, too, and just kind of looking back at what it's been like to be here, not, you know, you don't have to go like, super, we'll, we'll dive in a little bit more mm -hmm. moving forward. But like, when you look back at what these four years have been, um, is there anything like that stands out to you automatically is like something that you maybe didn't expect coming in um, outside of COVID that is a uh, that is really uh, kind of resonated with you as you you're you're nearing the you know the end of your fourth year. Yeah, when I was in high school, I got the opportunity to play um, with some of my best friends and my little sister, and I never really thought that a team could top that just because I already was playing with my best friends. But then coming here, and then playing with the six seniors um, or five seniors. And then all the other girls coming in every year, I just realized that each year the teams that come in are basically your best friends. And I never really thought I was going to be able to see that once I graduated high school, um, just because I thought I already hit the top um, playing with my little sister and best friends. But then every year, it's just I feel like the team has exceeded expectations with that. Um, yeah, it's been an amazing ride. All the girls are basically my best friends, even the coaching staff. Um, so, yeah. No, I love that. And mentioning your sister too, she's really popped off this year at Colorado yeah. State. Um, how do you guys kind of keep it? Like, are you guys like, do you keep in touch pretty well on, on basketball stuff throughout the year? Or is it just kind of like you more stay away from it? Or like, you know, what is that relationship like with that? Yeah, no, we definitely keep in touch a lot. Um, most times it's just talking about random stuff, not even related to basketball, which I think is um, even better for us just because um, just so we can have that bond outside of basketball, because basketball's super important for us but at the same time we're sisters and best friends so we kind of have to have that um gap between that but also we do talk about basketball just talk about um if she didn't play well or if she did play well or if I didn't or if I did um I don't know it's kind of just an easy way for us to bond but then also kind of circle back to just real life and talking about um what we've missed since we haven't been with each other for a while yeah um no I like that and, you know, one of the things that I, I found really interesting about you just kind of reading up and, and listening to things that you've done before, like, it seems like you have a really good perspective on staying grounded outside of basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just not the reality for a lot of people. So how did you kind of instill that in yourself? Because obviously, you, like, you very clearly take it seriously, and you do great stuff on court. But um, being able to actually take time away from the court is really hard for people. So how did you kind of get to that point? Um. In high school and when I was younger, I was normally just, I would get in my head a lot with basketball. And then I kind of just realized that that's like a shallow way of thinking. Basketball is supposed to be enjoyable and fun. And then just being able to step away from it and also have that social aspect outside. Um, it's super important to me. I love hanging out with my friends. I love going to the lake. I think stepping away from basketball and even in season, just taking your off days seriously. I will not touch a basketball on my off days. I won't do it just because we practice so much every day and you to have a healthy relationship with the game, you kind of have to take those off days and you have to take them seriously. Um, but yeah, I think that's just what helps me love the game even more is because I do um, really appreciate the off days and really appreciate the off season stuff. I still do work out a lot, but yeah, I just, I really appreciate the off days and I really appreciate the social aspects outside of the game. No, definitely. I think, I mean, that's such an interesting point because like, I feel like there's generally just an idea, like if you want to be a great athlete, you can't stop, you know, you, you have to be on the court every waking moment. And like you said, it's obviously you're you're doing prehab, rehab, everything that you have to do to be in touch and ready to go for practices and games and stuff. But, you know, being able to budget the time to actually sit down and like be a human for, for 30 minutes outside of a ball is really important. So it's cool that you have that. Um, you know, going off that as well, like you mentioned, in terms of being close with the coaching staff, one of the things that's really cool about the staff is pretty much everybody on staff. Uh, I believe, uh, yeah, I know Chevy, Jalen, Carly, and Jenny are all like, they all mm -hmm. played for Flan. They've all been at, at Creighton for a while. So when you look at what that means um, and just like how much this program feeds, feeds into itself, um, you know, what has that been like? And what is, uh, you know, what's kind of set that apart from what another staff might look like? Yeah, I think just being able to be coached by um, young females that have also been college athletes is something that um, is super important to all of us. And it's hard to step away from great. And when you look at them, um, they've never left the program. They wanted to be within the program their whole life. Um, I think that's something really special. And not a lot of other programs have. I'm sure a few do out there. Um, I'm just I don't know about that. Um, 
but yeah, just being able to be coached by them is something super special because they can put um, themselves into our shoes. They know what we've got, what we go through day in and day out. Um, but then also just being able to be friends with them outside of basketball is something super important to me. Um, being able to have those friendly conversations. Um, they do their jobs really well on the court, but then they also have that amazing balance off the court of just being your friend and be able to talk about the day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. And, you know, especially with coach Flannery too, um, mm -hmm. obviously he can get heated on the sidelines sometimes, yeah. but watching, I mean, like listening to him uh, outside, like seems just like a very relaxed person, like does not come yeah. across like a coach in some ways. Um, you know, how would you kind of explain him to people, you know, in, in just like day to day and, and what he's like as a coach? Yeah, as a coach, you definitely can see him getting a little heated on the sidelines, but that's just kind of the way he is. And that's the way he um, coaches basketball. And we all really appreciate and respect it. But then off the court, he's just he's just a friendly guy. Like he's super nice. He's asked about your day. He asked about your family, your siblings from home. Um, super relatable. He's not He's just a really good guy, really good person, and he gets really intense when he's coaching basketball, but so does every other coach. Um, but I just really appreciate that he can just really step away from that serious aspect of basketball and just be able to ask you about your family, how school's going, stuff like that. So it's been amazing being coached by him. No, I love that. Um, you know, and, and like you mentioned in terms of him just as a coach, too. One of the things that I always love about watching guys, I mean, the offense is just like one of my favorite things. I think mm -hmm. people can look at it and be like, oh, well it's so easy because it's their system. And I think like, yes, to a degree, but also establishing all that stuff is way harder than it, than it sounds like. Cause so much of it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like so much of what you guys do through motion is, um, you know, just being able to read and react and, and play off of one another. And that takes a lot of trust and chemistry. And, you know, the second that the ball stops, it kills the offense. And I think, again, what stands out with you guys, the ball doesn't stop very often. Um, so like when you look at, what it's taken to build up the offense to where it's at at this point over the course of your career. Um, you know, what are things that, again, like maybe people wouldn't realize in terms of like what goes into actually building out an offense like that? Yeah. Coming in freshman year and starting practices with the offense that we have um, was super confusing. All five of us were just mind blown at what was happening. Um, the coaches were yelling at us to make reads, like all this stuff. I've never heard of any of that before. High school was kind of just like, do what you want and you'll score, yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, it was super different. But then just being able to have five or four other girls with me freshman year to also be confused, I think helped because then we could put each other in our shoes and then the upperclassmen just helping us out. And then just taking that summer to really understand it. And now I think we still get confused sometimes because it's hard just maybe being able to make reads um, in live basketball play is kind of difficult sometimes. Um, but yeah, I think we've just really grown into the senior year and just like started to understand that we're still going to make mistakes. But um, the offense is super fluid. And I think we've we've pretty much almost perfected it, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's been so fun to watch because like part of like, I mean, exactly what you're talking about so much of it is like, um, okay, well, whatever you guys counter us with, we're going to find a way yeah. to play out of it because we just read basketball and like watching the the last game against Villanova, like they hard denied a lot early on to not let anything happen off screens. And then you guys started posting up and it's like, oh shoot, we can't defend that for shit. Yeah. And, um, and then you guys absolutely, you know, crushed them with that moving forward. Um, so I think like, you know, going off that too, like, um, how does coach Flannery and just the staff in general, like, detail what a good or bad shot is because again like I think it's easy to to look at how efficient you guys are and be like oh well that's you know it's simple to do you just space the floor but no mm -hmm. it's a lot of like really just finding the players in the right spots yeah I think Flan's gotten on us a little bit more this year of just being able we've kind of let defensive off with just shooting quick threes um mm -hmm. We're a really good three-point shooting team, but sometimes that's just not what we should be doing. And he's kind of honed in on us getting mid-post touches. Um, but I also think we're at an advantage with that is just because we have positionless players like myself and Morgan um, who can post up and then stretch the floor. So it just really challenges the defense to like try and understand what we're going to be doing. Um, but oftentimes Flan doesn't really ever say if anything's a bad shot. I remember one time, I don't know how this went in. I think this is the reality of half of my shots. <laughs> um, and he just trusts me and he understands that that's the stuff that we practice um, day in and day out. So I would say he gets on us more about just shooting quick threes than any um, bad shots within the paint, but. Yeah. Um, speaking of 
shots you've had to go in. Again, the game is Villanova. I don't, I, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? When I say it, but yeah, the step through that was like sort of a step through, but also falling yeah. away. That was that was wild. One of the most insane shots I've seen this year. Yeah, um, I have no idea how that went in. I trust me, I have no idea either. You have really good touch, but that was like that's one of the nastiest shots I've seen in basketball <laughs> this year. Um, but you know, like you mentioned in terms of being positionless and how much the team just relies on being able to everybody doing a lot of like like same things. Um, are there sometimes challenges in being positionless and and kind of figuring that out on the fly a little bit? You know, especially you guys are a team that see a lot of switches. Um, mm -hmm. so like you know, in terms of like obviously, I feel like there are obviously benefits to being able to be a positionless team. But is there anything that you feel like you guys have had to really work through this year on that? Um, I would say it's more just like you said, the teams do switch against us a lot. And sometimes it's hard to recognize when you have a mismatch um, because our offense is so fast paced and the ball is moving so much. So if a point guard gets switched on me, sometimes it's hard to recognize, oh, I have to go to the paint now instead of on the three point line. Um, but other than that, I just think our offense is so fluid that we'll get there and we'll just keep going throughout the possession and the shot clock. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's just hard to recognize the matchups that you have. No, definitely. Um, well, taking it back a little bit too, and talking about just looking at everything top down overall, like the the elite eight run you guys had, obviously in your sophomore year, is I think what a lot of people remember Creighton for. Um, and I, I want to start there in terms of you know when you guys were headed into that tournament, um, what was kind of the feel of the team and where you guys were at headed into that? Because in some ways it feels like it was a very similar position to where you guys are at now. You know, coming out of the mm -hmm. Big East and um, and headed into the NCAA. Yeah, I mean, we just had belief in what we've done throughout the whole year. Um, yeah, we just went into the the two games that we played, or three games, and we just knew that we could um, compete with these teams. Even playing Iowa, obviously, Caitlin Clark is one of the most talented players that's ever came through college basketball, men's or women's. Um, but we just knew that we could beat those teams, and I think that's the faith that we have this year as well, going into Big East and then NCAA tournament, eventually wherever we go. Um, but yeah, just the belief in each other and the trust that the coaches had in us really brought us to the elite eight that year. And then obviously last year didn't end up, um, how we wanted, but this year we're kind of looking at recreating what we did sophomore year. Definitely. Um, so like you mentioned though, and having those two days, like obviously you, you come in, like you, like, like you said, with a belief that you're going to do it, but what is that like the hours slash day, uh, between two games? Cause I feel like that's gotta be kind of a jarring process. You're like, all right, well, who are we going to play? You know, we got to get the scout real quick. Like, how are we yeah. practicing? Like, I feel like it's got to be a very, uh, a very fast paced bit of a whirlwind. Yeah, it's definitely a little more hectic than just regular season or even conference tournament because you know the teams are going to play. You know, yeah. the players know how they coach. Um, so it's just kind of weird playing entirely different teams with one day prep. You don't really know who they have, you don't know their offense. Um, but it's kind of just trusting um, the foundation that you built throughout the year, even if scout isn't going to be perfect. It's just trusting in each other and just go back to the fundamentals of defense and what you guys or what we've learned throughout the years. Um, yeah, scout gets a little tricky when it's one day prep with a brand new team, but just trust yourself and go back to the fundamentals. For sure. And then conversely, too, you know, when you make it to the second weekend, it's like, all right, mm -hmm. well, sick. We have a week off, um, yeah. which I think some people like obviously rest recovery. Great. Mm -hmm. At least for me, when I was an athlete, I hated anticipation more than anything. Yeah. I like would just rather rip the bandit off and do it right away. So like, how do you handle that? Because that's got to be kind of a lot because you're like automatically people like, oh, you guys had these two upsets over the weekend. Like, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then so, you know, you have that whole buzz going in. So how do you kind of stay focused and, and, and be ready for that? Yeah, that week off is a little interesting. Just I don't know. It's hard because you get off days and then you practice and you lift. It's kind of like it feels like a flashback of just regular season. Um, you're just going back your day or going about your day to day, like it's February instead of March. Um, but then you get more time to prep with scout. I don't know. It's kind of hard because that week is nice. It's needed rest, but at the same time, it's kind of built up anticipation. Um, but it's just another week that you get to do the day to day things that you potentially aren't going to get to do in two weeks. Yeah, no, definitely. That's a good point. Um, and especially like mentioning that, like, like having that kind of focus on you too. How mm -hmm. do you feel like that, um, that impacted just in general, like a, the program, but also like yourself as an athlete, like going from, okay. Like, obviously, you know, people know Creighton, people are aware of you guys are a major division one program, but like 
you have that happen. And I know you guys were talking about like nonstop for a while and rightfully so, but like, how do you kind of adjust to that? Did you view it as pressure? Or like, how did you kind of, um, how'd you kind of take that in? Yeah, I think going into that tournament run, we got a lot of media coverage. Um, a lot of people watched our games. Um, I thought it was just really cool. I thought we got the recognition that we deserved and that we worked for. Um, and then just going in the, these last three years, so now third year, um, people have followed us. People understand um, what we're capable of. And I think they're not knocking the the value that we could bring just because we're a smaller team. Um, mm -hmm. Traditionally, we play teams who are outsize us in a lot of aspects of the game but just being able to have that recognition from sophomore year and carry it into our senior year and hopefully um Creighton women's basketball program will just be able to carry on this legacy for many years to come yeah um and it's interesting too because uh coach plan had like a really good quote at the beginning of the year talking about how um you know like going from an elite eight to being out in the first round isn't quote-unquote a letdown like so much of basketball is about um being able to see what you guys do in the regular season, build off that. And it's just hard with the the, the tournament because it's one game, you know, it's one yeah. game at a time. And I think I really liked hearing that because I feel like, again, not every coach is going to bring that kind of perspective. And I think mm -hmm. it's important to have that. Um, but was it, were there kind of some challenges in, 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 in uh, you know, finding that perspective yourself too coming off junior year? Yeah, I mean, losing that first round game last year was super tough. We wanted to keep going for the seniors, for the staff, for everyone um, a part of that um, team last year. But I think what Flan said really speaks to just his character. I mean, basketball is one of those things where one day you could be shooting lights out and the next day you're not going to be shooting lights out. So it's kind of a frustrating loss. Um, Mississippi State deserved that win. We didn't play well um, or we didn't play good enough to beat them. But it's just frustrating because it's one game that can dictate the rest of the season or the rest of what you're going to be doing that year. Um, but, yeah, kind of just stepping away from that noise and focusing on ourselves because some games just aren't going to go our way, and that's tough, but that's kind of the reality of sports. Um, so hopefully this year we're going to be playing uh, playing even better than we did last year. Yeah, and I'd say you are. Um, but like, yeah. you're, like you're saying, too, like um, – you know, coming into this year, I know you really wanted to, I believe the direct quote was handle misses better. So mm -hmm. like, what did that mean for you? And and how do you kind of work on that? And it seems like you, you definitely have this year. So what, what, what kind of went into that? And um, how have you maintained that throughout the year? Yeah, I think last year I internalized a lot more um, than I needed to miss shots. I would get frustrated my, with myself for missing easy bunnies or stuff that people normally miss or normally make it's not something that's like just a wide open layup and I just internalize that and get really frustrated and then I'd stop shooting and then it kind of just it just impacted um day-to-day -day stuff throughout last year and then I kind of just realized that that's not how I want basketball to be for me anymore I want it to be enjoyable I want going to practice every day to be fun instead of dreading it and I that's what's happened this year I've loved every minute of it I've loved every game um, um I don't know what I actually did to stop um, doing that. I think I just told myself that it's time to grow up and just figure figure out how to move on from misses. No, that's awesome you're able to do that because I was never able to do that. So yeah. I can relate to that heavily. Um, yeah. But I mean, to, to to bounce around too, you you talked, touch, touched on the defense a little bit and, and about typically being a smaller team. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, especially in the Big East at least, like there are very few people asked to do as much defensively as you are. Um, you, you play center a lot again like you mentioned undersized um, you, you switch like you guys switch a lot so in mm -hmm. terms of looking at what you guys have to do defensively is there anything you feel like kind of goes under the radar on what you guys do on the defense thing because I know a lot gets made of like well we're smaller but if I, you guys do do some things on the defenseman that I think go mm -hmm. under the radar for sure yeah I think a lot of it has to do with our guards um, not to knock any of our um, bigger girls on the team but I think our guards just bring a sort of intensity to the defensive end, like Molly Lauren stepped up this year a ton. Mallory Brake has done amazing things for us, guarding the best player on the other team. Um, it's kind of just those hustle plays, the steals that we get, um, just being able to create um, tough miscommunication shots and just all that stuff on their offensive end. I think it's just team defense. I think Mallory has stepped up and she's been a huge part of our defense this year. I think Molly and Lauren have done the same thing. So I think it's just kind of an accumulation of, all of our skills put together on the team defensive end. Mm -hmm. 
What's been your hardest matchup this year, in your opinion? UConn. I mean, it's really tough to match up with them just because they have such talented players um, on their defensive end. They're going to bring out a lot of um, fast pace, quick shots um, for us on offense. So it's kind of just coming down, just being level, playing level. Um, but yeah, they're a really tough team. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, when you mentioned again, like talking about what you have to do defensively, when you have to play against a post that can like really score in the post and is really strong, yeah. how does that alter, like, does that alter at all how you play offensively? Or how do you kind of work to make sure it doesn't alter how you play offensively? Because I feel like, especially when there are teams where somebody really has to, you know, play a different um, kind of defensive matchup, it can alter how they play offensively. I feel like that maybe hasn't impacted you as much this year, but, you know, where does, how does that kind of register for you? Yeah, I think just having the perspective that good players are going to score. Um, good offense is going to beat good defense any day. Um, so just having that perspective, some players who just are really good at putting the ball in the hoop are going to score no matter what you do. Um, so you can't have that affect what you do on offense or what we do on offense, not just me. Um, so I thought we did a good job with that first half of the UConn game, the second game. And then the third quarter, we kind of just let it let it get too too far away um, for us. But yeah, you kind of just have to have perspective that good players are going to put the ball in the hoop, but we're also good and we can do the same thing. No, most definitely. Um, you know, going off that too, in terms of talking about what you bring offensively, I think one of the things that's really popped this year, I know before the year you really wanted to focus on facilitating more. And I feel mm -hmm. like you have done that in a big way that doesn't always show up in the box score because so much of what you guys do is, you know, thriving off of, you know, second, secondary tertiary assists and really just getting the ball flying. But um, like you guys can really invert the offense with you. You can run, pick and roll, especially mm -hmm. like with what you guys do off flare screens, you can just really destroy some teams on the second yeah. side. Um, but like in terms of bringing that into your game, again, like we talked about a little bit earlier, like so much of it is just not thinking. And again, I feel like you really embody that um, in terms of mm -hmm. just being able to, to make plays but what has been really big for you and being able to make those plays, you know, attacking off the dribble and getting into the paint more this year? Yeah, I think it's just that level of trust that the staff has with me being um, one of the primary point guards, which is kind of crazy to say. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just that trust and I've just grown in trust with myself as well. But then also my teammates help me out. They put the ball in the hoop a lot. So they give me those assists. Um I don't know, just trusting myself, trusting my ability. I've always wanted to be a guard, but I was always taller. So I was forced to be a post and then I would practice guard stuff. So it kind of worked out for me in the end, being able to play yeah. in and out. Um, but yeah, just the coaches really trust me um, going on my fourth year. I would hope that they do. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of an accumulation of trust and then skill set and finding the open girl. Definitely. Um, a couple more things to to wrap up on. When you're know, looking ahead to, to the Big East tournament, what are you most excited for? Um, obviously going out to Connecticut, it's, it's, a it's a, obviously a big trip for everybody, um, mm -hmm. for one team, but like, when you look at, you know, what that can, uh, what are you most excited for with this tournament? Um, every year it's honestly so fun. The Mohegan sun is an awesome place to play. I love I it there. Parents, yeah. I think our parents have, have some fun down there. Uh, I think we might end up playing Seton Hall again. We've played them the first round now three years in a row. Um, it's kind of just fun playing the teams with a brand new record. Um, cause if you lose, you go home, if you win, you keep going and you don't get that in the regular season. So I think it's just kind of added pressure in those games because it's a brand new season. Uh, people are playing differently. I think Butler is a perfect example of that. They're playing really great as of late, um, and didn't start off the season super well, but that's just kind of what tournament time in March brings you is you're going to get everyone's best. So just being able to, um, bring your best as well and then keep going definitely um you know especially looking at like like we've talked about with the ncaa tournament coming up what is selection sunday like for you guys i always want to ask people that because obviously mm -hmm. it's different for me like i do some bracketology stuff so like i'm just always working but what does uh <laughs> what does selection sunday look like for the great and blue jays and how do you kind of handle that because i feel like maybe you have like some semblance of where you guys are going to end up uh when you mm -hmm. get there but also just got to be a little bit like like we talked about with waiting between weeks yeah I think the built up anticipation is kind of stressful I mean that's yeah. often we didn't know um 100% if we were going to be going or what seed we were going to be and last year we kind of expected it this year um also but at the same time it's still fun to just be able to like sit in the gym watch the tv watch the big screen 
Uh, we normally do something with the men's team as well. So being able to watch them um, get their name called for the tournament is also super fun. It's kind of a cool bonding experience with some of your other friends. And then just be able to see the parents and fans come in and just like celebrate what we've done with the season. So it's just super fun, but a built up anticipation kind of sucks. Just waiting for your name. <laughs> yeah. We're waiting, waiting for where you're um, actually going to find out where you go. Yeah, no, I can, I can only imagine that's gotta be not, not a lot of fun. Um, but you know, it's like, you know, looking back again, just in, in everything as a whole. And, and I know, like you mentioned, you have potentially another area that you can use. Um, but what do you think you're maybe most proud of from yourself over, over your time at Creighton? Like what's something that you look back and, you know, if you told yourself you're going to do that before you step, step, step foot on campus, um, you know, what would kind of, uh, what would kind of make you feel most proud of yourself? Um, I think it's just being able to grow from the stresses and the um, highs and lows of basketball. I think I've been such an internal player my whole life. I Things get to my head. I get um, frustrated really easily. But then this year, I don't think I've done that at all. And that's one thing that I've been most proud of, just because I don't know how I moved on from that or how I grew from that. But yeah, I think that's just really impressive to just be able to... Um, I don't know, just grow up and just figure out um, what you need to do day in and day out. I'm just really proud of that with myself. Yeah. You just had an internal clock that decided, all right, not anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's a nice benefit. <laughs> um, and then lastly, uh, you know, both as an individual and as a team, what are some goals and aspirations you really have, uh, you know, obviously this year, but also moving forward, what are things you really want to do and accomplish? Yeah. I think at the beginning of the year, we talked about just making it as far as we can, but I think also, one huge key for us was just be able to have fun while doing it. I think if you take away um, the fun in basketball, going far isn't going to be makes much of a difference just because you're not having fun. So I think that's something that we've taken a lot of pride in is just coming every day with the optimism of having a really good practice, even if um, one of the drills you hate. I personally hate five man weave, but Ugh, even if yes, even if you get stuck with that during a practice. Um, just being able to have fun outside of it and then also just internal not internalizing but just learning and growing from the mistakes that we're going to make throughout a game because you're not ever going to play a perfect 40 minutes um, that's not really possible in basketball or in any sport in general but just being able to grow from the mistakes and then also having fun while doing it definitely um, what do you hate most about five man weave I don't know it's like so tiring and it's just so annoying <laughs> I've done it every day since not we haven't done it every day here but in high school we started practice every day with five-man weave I think that also didn't help my love for five-man weave that would do it for sure yeah understandable yeah. um and lastly if you and Hannah play one-on-one -on -one, who's winning me yeah Sorry. okay well I'll we'll make sure she knows but yeah no I if believe it's a three point it three-point contest her but one-on-one -on -one, me yeah, you can shoot it too so yeah, but I believe it. You have to give her something, right? You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Emma, I really appreciate your time. It was really dope getting to know you a little bit. I'm excited to watch you guys uh, continue on with the year and see what you keep doing moving forward. Emma, thank you for your time. To everyone listening, thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day.